What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel, the sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whenever it is you get around and watching this, guys, once again, Stephen Heider, Gate City Sports Channel. All right, guys, today's topic. Hey, listen, I'm going to keep breaking down. I'm going to do another defensive player, you know, kind of film study here because I've done a lot of offensive players. I'm going to try to give you guys a little bit of break from the offensive stuff and the offensive hype, and let's, let's talk a little more about defensive guys. So I'll give you at least one more day here of a defensive breakdown, okay? Today what I want to talk about is our six-round pick, Sean Bradley, local product coming out of Temple University. Listen, this is a kid that I broke down the film, and I, I won't lie to you guys. Listen, he's a long developmental prospect guy. But I will tell you this. Even on film, even though I know that this kid's a developmental prospect, and I, I, you know, I, I do think he's a questionable player to make the roster initially, I will tell you this. There were moments on his film, guys, where I was watching and I was like, okay, like, hey, man, like the kid, sometimes his instincts let him down, and sometimes those instincts are, are spot on, and I thought he did a really good job at certain aspects of things. He's another one of these kids that he seems to... Uh, be a guy that is kind of a student of the game. I saw him really lining up his teammates at times. He was getting his teammates in the right spot. It looked like he had somewhat of a, a leadership role there. I, I will admit, guys, as I was watching film, I, I would be I would be a liar if I didn't state this. While I was watching film of Bradley, I will admit, hand, the corner hand popped off on film to me. I won't lie about that. But with that said, I mean, I thought there were some positives about Sean Bradley. Um... I think this is a kid that brings a little toughness. I think he's going to be a pretty good special teams player. I mean, I could definitely see this kid uh, working in coverages on, on special teams. Like, he definitely has got it there. I thought he opened his hips and, and moved pretty well for, for a guy who played inside. I mean, I was shocked to see that. I don't think his instincts were always the greatest. I think he missed some plays at times. But at the same time, guys, like, what are you expecting? It's a six-round pick, right? All right, y'all. Without further ado, we're going to break down the film of Sean Bradley, and let's talk a little bit about... Hey, how does this guy fit? I love the fact this is a local product, a local kid, uh, coming out of one of our local colleges. So, hey, let's talk about it. Sean Bradley, uh, inside linebacker, Temple University. All right, y'all, let's get into today's topic. Get it to him, even though you know it's getting to him. His instincts led him to shoot that gap and beat that offensive Game lineman well, to the play. Hesitation. All right, ladies and gents, Sean Bradley. So if we're talking about his positional alignment, I'll just – discuss quickly what I saw on film about his positional alignment, guys. So, to begin with, simply put, played a lot of inside Mike linebacker. Don't know if it'll project that way at the next level, guys. I can see reasoning and arguments to say that he probably is not going to play the Mike at the next level. I can also see where you talk about systems and schemes like the Eagles to where it makes sense to have a guy who's a little undersized for a Mike play the Mike in the Philadelphia Eagles, you know, personnel packages here. Defensive personnel packages, I should say. Now, on film, a lot of Mike, when we were in pass situations, I noticed. I thought, it's not that it's not that he only played in passing situations. It's that he really stood out and popped off on the film as a Mike linebacker playing in his own systems. I thought he did a really good job of dropping back as a zone defender and really making it difficult for quarterbacks to fit balls into very tight windows. Sean Bradley dropped back and take that deep in route away. He gets right in that zone. And that's to say, I don't think this kid is the most um, lengthy or rangy guy. Like, I, I don't think he has that kind of length or range, that kind of wingspan to really disrupt throws. I just think that he was really good on his feet, really good with his hips. And he got good instincts in terms of getting back deep enough to really make it take away zones and windows to throw into. I thought he did really well in that aspect. Now we can say... Hey, will that translate to the next level? Will those instincts hold up? Will they fail him because he can't make up for it with his physical, you know, wingspan and length and things like that? Sure, guys, it's all that's all a concern. I, you know, long long story short, I don't know. We'll have to see how it translates into games, guys. Now, I didn't think he was the greatest at run defense, but I did see some times where I thought his instincts were really, really good as a run defender. Now, this is what I'll say about a run, about his run defense. I thought he was a lot better playing the will, the weak side as a run defender. Hand off. Than playing the Mike. Although there were a few times as a Mike defender 
playing that mic positioning, playing the run defense. I thought he did okay. For Temple, they represent the toughest players on the team. Well, what you see here already is... Okay. But I will say that as a mic defender, sometimes he had a tendency to really get caught up and held on to blocks. And that's kind of a bad thing you want for you. You don't want your mic to get caught up on block. Number 79, the right tackle, gets to the second level and engages Bradley in a block that he can't get off of. And what that probably comes to, guys, is that he, he doesn't have the greatest play strength. If you look at someone like Joshua Krabs, who's a scout that I I, I like a lot, guys, I I think that he's a very good, ju you know, he, he judges talent very well. He, he breaks down film really well. He said that he thought Sean Bradley didn't have the, the greatest play strength which I thought was a little over. I thought that was a little harsh of a critique of him. I really thought that it wasn't so much his strength as much as it was the length. He doesn't have the, the really long arms to really keep that offense alignment, that tight end up off of his body and to shed it, you know, so to stack and shed them. So I, I definitely thought he struggled in that regards. But look, he's going to have Clint Fla Ken Flagel here to, to help develop him. Now, the one thing I will say that kind of sucks about the Eagles' current linebacker situation is there's not a lot of veteran you know, guys here. I mean, you got Jatavis Brown, you got Nate Gary, but there's not a lot of veteran presence here to help a young man like this to kind of develop. I mean, this is where maybe a guy like a Nigel, you know, Bradham could have come into play, which maybe he signs back. We don't know. But I do think we, we are going to miss that aspect of it. And I think that's what was happening to this young man is that sometimes offensive linemen just really got into his body and then he couldn't utilize his strength effectively to get himself free because he looks like a strong athlete to me. That part... I will say about the young man. Look at Bradley defend that edge and defend that option beautifully here. <clears throat> so while I was breaking down film of Sean Bradley, the one thing that really stood out to me, ladies and gentlemen, was just how often he was around the ball. And I could tell he was fast, but I couldn't really tell, like, how fast is this kid? So you go back, you look at his combine numbers, and it's really not a surprise what this kid was running. I mean... Came in about like what six one two thirty five ish guys ran a four five one four. We'll send four players here. He wins with his quickness, so he shoots gaps and plays fast. And there's uh, thirty two and a half inch vertical, one hundred twenty one uh, inch broad jump, seven oh seven in a three cone, and the most impressive, in my opinion, was the four twenty four he threw up on the twenty yard shuttle. This kid's very athletic, man, and you can see that when he's really shooting. <laughs> The, you know, coming through those gaps and shooting those gaps. The Eagles had a plan in place, guys. We've seen it. Even with their undrafted rookie free agent pulls, we, we know what they're after. They're after more team speed. It feels like to me as if Howie Roseman in his front office was very embarrassed with just how unathletic our team was down the stretch. And I, I think they set out to make sure that does not happen again. And that's the one thing that this kid will bring is just more athleticism to that defensive side of the football, guys, because... You know, you got a Davion Taylor, who was the guy that really, you know, he's not quite Davion Taylor. I mean, Davion Taylor, 4-4-9-40, they're 40 times they're the same, or similar guys, but 127-inch broad jump, so, he, you know, he's got a much further broad jump. 6-9-6, six, six, three cone, like, guys, these are athletic dudes we brought into this room. And if you go back and you watch Sean Bradley, there are some things that will frustrate you about him because, man, this kid's athletic and he pops off on film. But, dude, sometimes he just needs to make the play. Make sure you make the play when you get there. He gets there. He doesn't always wrap up and tackle, guys. And that's a little frustrating when you watch this on film is when he shoots a gap, he gets there beautifully, and then he doesn't tackle. Like, he doesn't wrap it up. Also, I will admit, guys, there was one play in particular I saw it, it agitated me, irritated me a little bit about Sean Bradley because, listen, I could just be misjudging it. These kind of things happen when you're looking at film. You can misjudge somebody. But it seemed like to me as if he gave up on the play and didn't realize it was still active and the play came right to him. And it just, it, it looks really bad on film, guys. Like something you, you just can't let happen if you're a football player. You can't let that, you can't let that be on your film. I love the way he begins this by opening his hips and getting to that zone. But man, you got to be aware. Outside of that, guys, we're going to love the way this kid can defend the edge. We're going to love the way this kid can shoot a gap. We're going to love the way this kid instincts will sometimes take him in coverages because I thought where Davion Taylor was a little raw in his coverage but got away because of the pure athletic abilities, I did feel like Sean Bradley 
made solid decisions in the zones, how far he got deep in those zones and took away those windows. So I do think we're going to love that about this kid. White screen pass to Kenneth Gainwell, leading the conference in all purpose. All right, guys, to close this out, like I said, I love the athleticism of this kid. I love what Howie Roseman in the front office is trying to do for Jim Schwartz and his coaching staff to give them more speed, especially when you got those hogs down there in that defensive line, guys. We got those guys ready to eat, ready to control that line of scrimmage. Having these fast-flowing linebackers that can get around, I mean, go all the way back to free agency, Jatavius Brown, right? Nathan Gary has got is a guy that used to be a safety who's pretty good moving around, right? You, you spend your third-round pick on a kid that can move around, right? Then you go get Bradley who can move around. I, I love the direction. I, I love what they're trying to do here. Even Duke Riley is a guy that moves pretty well. I'm just hoping it pans out. I'm hoping that defensive line can play well enough to allow these linebackers to use their athleticism to be disruptive because we're not spending a lot of resources at the position. We haven't really put a lot of investment there. So we have to really hope this development, Ken Flagel keeps developing these, these guys that most of us have never heard of and, and keeps it up. So you already know what I think about this young man, but you know, the question that's coming up, guys, I want to know what do you think about Sean Bradley? All right, guys, tell me your opinions. Tell me your thoughts on Sean Bradley. Like I said, it's a kid that, I think might have a little bit of a tough time making the roster. I'm not going to say he won't make the roster, but he's got an uphill battle in front of him. It's probably going to depend on just how good of a special teams player he is, because I think that's the key when you get down deep in the depth chart. You better be able to play special teams. So I think that'll be, you know, kind of that pivotal role is who's the better special teams player here at these fifth and sixth position, you know, spots on different positional groups. All right, y'all, let me know your thoughts. You know what time it is. You know how we end these videos. We go E A. G-L-E-S. All right, y'all. Let's go, Eagles.